Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Halo, the Halo news show that keeps you up to date with everything that's going on with Halo. Kind of like a one-stop shop for everyone who just can't catch all the news that happens all one little bit at a time. This one, every Monday, we post up a new episode, letting you guys know of everything that's happened in the past week of Halo. And last week was pretty great, guys. We had some great news about the MCC Season 8 flight, some new HDS and YouTube channel stuff for official Halo content, and some changes coming for the next Halo Infinite flight, which seems to be coming pretty soon, of course to 343 and one of the biggest bands in the world plays the halo theme live so that and a lot more so you guys like these news and informational kind of videos make sure to tap that like button it really helps out the video and channel if you want to stay updated with everything going on with halo as a rebel to the release of halo infinite well make sure you tap subscribe so let's get right into the content here so let's start off with the big news that hit us guys. The season eight flight has begun for the MCC and it brings so much awesome customization and new content to the game as well, which has sparked a bit of controversy because these new armor sets, while quite extravagant and much uh, more unique than we're used to for a Halo game, they are pretty freaking awesome and look really cool as well. The season eight flight brings so much more content, like brings flood to Halo 3 ODST, which is crazy. The new custom game browser bringing in combat involved in Halo 3 with new implementations to the filters and searching for custom game browser. Brings back the classic HUD for CE. Again, new armors for Halo 3 as well as those same helmets come over to Halo Reach as well. A new map for Halo 3 called Icebox was a recreation of Halo 2's classic map Turf, Steam account linking, PC file share. Like this is going to be probably one of the best seasons that we've seen hit the MCC really since Halo 4 came for us guys when they brought in crossplay and a bunch of extra new content and stuff like that to the game so this has been a really great flight to get a chance to play. The first night on, I actually wasn't able to play any online matches due to some kind of weird server issue. It's been resolved now, so if anyone of you guys out there hasn't tried since the opening night of the flight, I highly suggest you go by and check it out. I do have multiple videos on my channel as well, detailing everything you need to know about the Season 8 flight, about the customization and all the new content coming in, so I highly suggest you go back and check out those videos. But needless to say, Season 8 is looking to be pretty freaking awesome. Can't wait to just dive in and make a ton of content on this channel guys about season eight i also wanted to showcase this cool little thing i found online guys about from aurora bird who does a little bit of modding digging into a little bit of the files of various halo games tweeted out saying also fun fact the hood used for the karian crow if i pronounced that correctly and the skull helmet is a separate mesh so technically you can put other helmets into this hood now basically stating that possibly down the line with future updates of the MCC, we could see that hood that we see for like the skeleton and basically like the plague mask looking guy. We could see those possibly being detached from those exact helmets and brought over to other helmets for more customization within the MCC possibly maybe make its own category like we have with like the back accessories could we have like helmet accessories as well for like more customization like that for halo reach and as well for halo 3 i mean it seems like it's a possibility just an interesting little tidbit i want to throw to you guys there but yeah the season 8 flight runs until september 13th until then guys get your games in play some flood firefight and have a good time now along with season 8 of the mcc greatness we also have some more awesome halo news talking about the hcs side of things and some big information drops recently just happened for us guys some really interesting stuff which i'm super excited about one of those being the partner teams announced with hcs now, i did make a video on this previously give you more details please go check out that video but essentially we had cloud9 mve united phase clan who just came out for the win of the world championships for call of duty with fanatic g2 esports navi sentinels and space station gaming all these teams proactively jumping into the competitive halo scene guys and it's gonna be really exciting to see how well the new kind of production level will be going into hcs and how their new model of supporting organizations over players kind of situation will play out with the hcs i'm very excited about this cannot wait into the next event guys and it sounds like the next event will be having some information about that 
pretty soon. In fact, even this month. Now, I've referred to this tweet multiple times. It's basically Tasha saying that they've locked down an event and general time, but he said he'll share more details later this summer, which this month is the last month of summer. So we're going to get some information about the first in-person event held by eSports Engine for HCS. I'm sure you guys have been wanting to see some more game content as well as Snakebite. Pro HCS player has mentioned this as well, saying being loving the content of HCS lately. Would just love it slight more if it had anything to do with the game coming out in a few months. Hoping we keep this kind of content going when the real deal comes around. And Tashi did actually reply to this saying, more on the way and game related. So obviously as we get closer to the release of Halo Infinite, the more stuff we'll get to know about it and more stuff about these HCS reveals will provide more information about the game itself as well. Like we had previously about the input-based matchmaking system that they're doing for the HCS side of things. And if we're talking about HCS content, we have two bits that you definitely want to pay attention to guys. This is going to be the top 25 greatest players of all time created by HCS here guys. And just going over, yes, pretty much exactly as it says, the top players who have ever played Halo getting ranked right here. And it's a pretty interesting thing. We have some iconic members of the Halo community like Bravo, Elamite, Goldboy, Clutch, Walshy, Goofy, Mickwin, Gaskin, and Hines as well, which... If you have Walshy as a guy who's doing the judging, I would suspect Walshy to be up there in the top 25. So would that exclude him possibly? I don't know. But it turns out there's a little bit more than just announcing this list to this top 25 thing here, saying at the time of recording this on Monday at 10 a.m., we'll get a first week of revealing three players a day, which will then leave us with the top 10. And said along with these announcements, they'll be sharing moments from these players as well, just kind of going back over the good old days and stuff like that. So it's super exciting to kind go a little bit down memory lane of competitive Halo and also see what's probably coming in the future as well. In week two, starting on Monday the 13th, they'll be releasing a video from the top 10 to number six each day, each video dedicated to that single player. And then on Monday the 20th, they'll be again releasing a video about each player. And then on Thursday, they'll open up a community poll where people can weigh in on who they think the greatest player of all time is. And then on the last day, they reveal number two and number one on the list. So so this isn't simply just like a one-time list kind of thing. They're kind of making it into kind of a bit of an ordeal about listing off the top greatest players of all time in Halo. This is kind of like a Hall of Fame ceremony almost when it comes to HCS side of things. And also guys, it seems like it'll be a great way to kind of get your history lessons involved with this as well. So I think that's also a pretty cool thing for a lot of you guys who are maybe more newer to Halo as well and haven't really been able to catch up with a lot of the history behind the HCS and competitive Halo. Get a chance to kind of really get to your history lessons involved with it as well which is super exciting so now you're probably watching it's so like well i won't be able to catch up with all that stuff because i don't have a twitter i can't catch it whenever these posts go live or go to the website or whatever for halo.gg well you can go check out the newly created halo esports youtube channel here guys where you can go in and you actually get a chance to check out a lot of the content they said they will be releasing these videos on their youtube channel as well so this is a new youtube channel for official halo content I mean, I, like you can see right here, I'm already subscribed and you guys should probably as well. They've been uploading top 10 plays, like talking about the top 25 players of all time, some new announcements with like the esports orgs coming in as well. So definitely go give it a follow. Link will be in the description of this video, guys. So if you want to check that out, you definitely can. But before we go into the next segment, a little word from these guys right here. Vite Ramen is a small US-based company that provides a far more tasty, fulfilling, and more importantly, healthier option than your typical ramen brands. In less than three minutes, one packet of Vite Ramen gives you more food than the leading ramen brands, 25% of your daily micronutrients, up to 30 grams of protein, seven grams of dietary fiber, and most importantly to me, 50% less sodium to help you live a healthier lifestyle. Where the leading brand is really just salt and carbs. Vite Ramen also has vegan plant-based versions as well. My favorite is the Sichuan chili, as it actually packs a punch of heat along with a filling bowl of ramen. I mean, look at me. Isn't that the face of satisfaction right there? And why give your money to the corporate overlords We can help out a small business? So check out the link in the pinned comment and also in the description of this video to give Vite Ramen a look over. And thank you very much, Vite Ramen, for sponsoring this video. So we talked about the MCC, we talked about HCS, we even talked a little bit about Vite Ramen because they're such a great sponsor, guys. We gotta talk about Halo Infinite and the new changes coming in for the upcoming flight and how the flight seems to be coming around pretty soon for us, guys. So on Friday, September 3rd, 
343 dropped us guys this big boy development update from all the outcomes of the flight testing that we have for the tech preview of Halo Infinite. And so I went through this entire blog, read through it guys. I actually haven't had a chance to post a video on it because I was so busy with family in town over the weekend staying at my house. So I couldn't really get into the news for you guys. So this is gonna be the first time I go over it. We're gonna go over every single thing because I'm sure you watched videos about it previously. But we're gonna give you all the highlights and the TLDR of everything about this blog update and when you can expect the next flight for Halo Infinite. So in the blog, they started with the accessibility, talk about the friend or foe outline system and how it's been generally a positive feedback from that. They also people really enjoy the full remapping of controller and mouse and keyboard as well. They also had some feedback about the desire for auto sprint so you didn't have to keep holding forward on the stick. You can just tap the button and you just keep on sprinting, which already is that feature within it kind of, but you just have to keep holding forward. So they're looking to kind of maybe figure out that later. They talk about how they are looking to do that maybe after launch, nothing pre-launch, obviously. Also the desire to alter the colors of the damage system and mark system as well. They again stated that like, you know, they're willing to take that feedback in, but something might be kind of looking to change post-launch. Next, they go into the audio side of things and overwhelmingly positive people love the music for the multiplayer. I did as well, guys. And the music in this game is incredible. It sounds familiar, yet new at the same time. Pretty much what Halo Infinite is trying to accomplish. Also mentioning how most of the weapons sounded really great and it was a really fun experience, though there was some feedback, one being the Needler audio needs to sound a little bit more crystallized because the Needler within the game itself sounded kind of thumpy and not really like you're shooting needles if that's the, the way to kind of phrase it. And also more granular controls with in-game voice options like your personal AI, sparring chatter, multiplayer announcer. Talking about the Needler and the Gravity Hammer specifically within this update saying we are continuing to iterate on the sound design of of the Needler Plaza Pistol fi Primary Fire along with enhancing the Gravity Hammer sound now. We're preparing to deliver an in-progress version for those new sounds for our next public flight. So we're looking forward to hearing your thoughts on these updates in the next round, which that's great to hear such a quick turnaround when it comes to the flight. Next to go into the live service things, mainly talking about the battle pass and challenges as that's created a bit of a debate within the Halo community. I do have a video on my channel right now, guys, which kind of goes into more discussions about the challenge system and how funneling XP gains through challenges might be a way to kind of, one, curate the experience of Halo Infinite a little bit better, and also a two, to help out from people from cheesing the system a little bit, which we had in previous Halo games. A very important paragraph, guys. I just need to read this out because it's a very important information that I think you guys will really need to know. Stating from a player feedback perspective, we heard the request to earn XP per match outside the challenges as well as the XP boost timers only counting down while in a match. Or if you guys remember the XP boost, just continually keep counting even if you're searching for a game. One of the items that wasn't fully there in the tech preview was our daily challenge model that provides challenges along the lines of play X number of games that will repeat throughout the day. These challenges are replaced after completion and provide a regular XP drop for your battle pass just for playing matches and having fun during your session with Halo Infinite. The weekly challenges are where you will see your more specific challenges that you might recognize from other games. For example, get 10 kills with a battle rifle. There is a significantly greater depth with the weekly challenges than you saw in the tech preview that we will go through in the future. Jerry Hook, who is the head of design at 343 and basically kind of in charge of all the battle pass system, replied to a user on Twitter who asked the question, could you clarify if the complete X game challenges mentioned in the article, you will have the number of games needed to complete the challenge increase every completion or will it always be complete three games for an instance? Jerry Hook replied back saying, sure, as this continues to come up, play a match with a daily challenge of play one match. Once you complete one match, you will earn XP for that challenge. You are then given immediately a new challenge of play one match. We will go into deeper details with the design team soon. So it sounds like maybe a lot of people within the Halo community might have kind of jumped the gun a little bit when it comes to judging whether or not having your challenges dictate how much XP you earn within the game. Because it sounds like your daily challenge kind of stuff is going to be basically like play the game kind of challenges and not necessarily anything that will be very difficult where you're not just not earning a continuous stream of XP earning progress on your battle pass. Because yeah, it would be a pretty terrible feeling to play like 
10 games, 5, 10 games in a row and get zero progress on your battle pass, that would be kind of disheartening. I'm pretty sure 343 knows that and would want to avoid that. Again, I do have a video on my channel kind of going into this topic in much greater depth on my channel, guys, so please go check out that video. Now let's go into the multiplayer changes that can be happening for Halo Infinite and some of the stuff you will see in the next fight coming up pretty soon here. Talking about one thing about toning back those perfectly placed grenade bounces at lower difficulty levels because they were more accurate than we'd like. So you will see less perfectly thrown grenades by the bots, which will certainly be nice. But you'll see kind of working in progress, kind of uh, the bots running better routes, being more effective with equipment, you know, bots being less confused with mid-combat, higher difficulties even have been requested, like a mythic level bot for these kind of difficulties, which is pretty interesting to say like, oh yeah, Spartan wasn't hard enough. And 343 three states that most of the stuff is kind of just like ongoing kind of stuff that, you know, eventually they will get to when it comes to improving the bots. But for right now, most of it's going to be kind of like as is going into the launch of the game. But as 343 three states that Halo Infinite's a game, it's a live service, and as well as the service means that they will continually updating these bots over time, making them better. Next section is the weapon drills. The two positive bits of aspect of what the weapon drills provides that one was a, it was a great place for players to learn how weapons worked and also just a fun thing to kind of go for high scores. We saw some tweets go viral, people going like 60,000 plus points with a sniper rifle. But some of the feedbacks were a desire to teach alt fire modes more clearly. Some wanted a way to swap between weapon drills more quickly. Some players wanted untimed weapon drills and made Many players wanted equipment and movement drills as well. I mentioned specifically about the untimed drill saying, yep, it's a race slate for a post release list as well. So we will get this eventually within Halo Infinite. And most of these improvements that they were talking about are things that really would probably be more post launch kind of additions and nothing really that would be changed greatly before the launch of Halo Infinite. A big bit of feedback was the combat sensor as well as AKA the radar. It's talking about how, you know, people kind of found it a little bit more confusing because it's not what really a lot of people are used to now. And they said that basically what they're looking to do with this is change it from the Halo 5 kind of threat tracker that they had previously going for the last flight and the new flight sounds like they'll be going much more with the traditional motion tracker of old they'll have for flight 2 for Halo Infinite. So your guys' feedback is legitimately changing the game. Next section was about personal AI and a lot of people seem to really enjoy them. I enjoyed them as well. I feel like it brought a little bit more personality to the multiplayer experience. Essentially people were just asking for more customization and then also a way to preview the voices as well and just having greater control over the frequency of how often they talk with like sparring chatter, chatter and things like that. Stating here specifically we agree that previewing a personal AI's voice and personality before you take them into battle just makes sense. Fortunately, we've already been working on this and it should be in our next flighting build, so be sure to test it out in the next lobby beforehand. Next, we're talking about the medals and they're getting a huge remake, guys, for the next flight and it's super exciting. You can see right here on the lower bar right here, this is the before medals. Now you have the after effects, but basically this completely improved these medals. They kind of make them more like metal and a little bit more in line with what the traditional look of these metals have looked. And I just think like these simple little changes make such a huge difference and really makes these metals stand out. Like I feel like the iconography that they're using within these images really stands out a lot more. They made the images a lot bigger and easier to read while maintaining their art style that they had originally and also kind of going with the idea of like the common, uncommon, rare, ultra rare kind of metal coloring tiers that they're going with with Halo Infinite, which I think is kind of an interesting idea. And like I said, we will see these metals in the new update as well. The next big section was the sandbox and guys the sandbox had a lot of things to talk about within this because obviously the sandbox is one of the key aspects of Halo Infinite and uh, they talk about specifically about the friend or foe options and they said that they were looking for people to have like the ability to turn them off completely or have the gamer tag appear above them or have the overshield be shown a little bit easier and also have better indication of how much damage a player has taken. Well it sounds like all that's being taken into consideration. From the blog update, it sounds like they've updated the overshield to make it more obvious, as well as having the damage indicator on shields be more vibrant and easier to tell. Because that's definitely I saw within the flight was that it didn't really seem it was too easy to tell if a player was shot twice, three times, maybe one shot before going no shields or something like that. So I'm glad to hear that's being updated as well. They talk about the aiming as well within this game, saying that well, most of it's felt pretty good, but some weapons like the sniper rifle and the 
skewer were the two weapons of main complaints and they felt kind of clunky and hard to move. Well, it sounds like they've kind of upped the sensitivity on the sniper, but kind of left the skewer the same as the skewer is really made for an anti-vehicle kind of uh, weapon rather than an anti-personnel weapon, which this next fight will be BTB. So I'm sure we'll get a chance to see the skewer in full glory rather than being used as a PVP weapon. A big bit of feedback was the gravity hammer within the tech preview. Some people thought it was too good. Some people wasn't thought it wasn't good enough. And 343 sees both sides of this argument and they basically say that they're kind of keeping an eye on this, monitoring the effectiveness of the weapon and see what might be some minor tuning that might be needed with it. The next bit they talk about is the equipment and equipment guys in Halo Infinite, to my experience, is a ton of fun to utilize. I really think there's a lot of opportunities for really unique aspects of gameplay to be brought up with this. I mean, like they talk about the grapple shot being like loved by the community. They also mentioned about the drop ball felt a little slow and a bit weak. And they talk about this specifically saying that they want the drop ball to be more of a proactive kind of bit of equipment rather than a reactive bit of equipment. Uh, basically, they don't want it to be like the Halo 3 bubble shield, right? Where basically if you're getting shot, throw down a bubble shield right away, it gets you out of the gunfight, which can be quite annoying and really stops the flow of gameplay. What they want you to do is be more proactive with the bubble shield and uh, with the drop ball, I should say, to predict engagements rather than just being in the middle of a fight and throw down a bubble basically like we had in Halo 3. Uh, they did reduce the time deployment time of it but they're looking to kind of keep an eye on it when it comes to the health of the shielding and things like that of the drop ball as well. And if you guys don't know if you shoot the little pedestal at the bottom of the drop ball it knocks it out completely. This is something I tested out in the flight, and I think it's a really cool counter, and I just don't think it's very obvious to a lot of people. This is why 343 is waiting to do some major changes when it comes to the drop wall, but at least being able to deploy it is going to be a bit faster and a little bit more effective within the game. And lastly, guys, they're talking about the user interface, and a big point of feedback was the HUD customization and how the HUD seemed to be a bit small and kind of out of the way when it comes to playing Halo Infinite. And they said they yeah, they've seen like a ton of fan mock-ups and things like that, talking about how they could change change up the HUD in some ways or another, letting players being able to see what their second grenade that they are holding is without having to click through a menu, which is going to be pretty big within the gameplay experience. But this is another kind of aspect of the game of Halo Infinite where 343 is going to be kind of keeping an eye on the HUD itself and see what can really be changed because Obviously changing something like that is a huge experience changer for the gameplay of Halo Infinite. So obviously you want to take that in consideration and be a little more cautious when it comes to changing that kind of stuff around. Again, as soon as any kind of changes get announced, you guarantee I'll let you guys know on this channel. So now I'm sure the big question is, okay, what's the next flight and when is it going to happen? We have no news on it yet. Well, it sounds like it might be coming around here pretty close for us guys as the harassment has begun. On September 3rd, we got our first tweet from community manager Unichek saying, so you still have this registered for the Halo Insider. And basically is saying, guys, the flight's coming around here pretty soon. This is gonna be a 4v4 arena and big team battle PVP flight as well. So you're definitely gonna wanna take part of this next fight for us guys so make sure you jump onto your halo insider profile and get yourself signed up for some amazing halo infinite gameplay guys again all you got to do is just go to your halo insider page make sure all your boxes are checked green you know i've seen a lot of people have everything checked but then they didn't actually verify their email very important step guys signing up for communications as well so you're allowed to receive emails and so hopefully the delivery process of getting people's codes as a little bit easier than last time because having to funnel everybody to Halo Waypoint was a disaster, basically. I mean, I was sitting there waiting for like two hours just trying to load the website to get the freaking code to download the game. You know, we just can't have that happen again. And this last section, guys, are the hidden stories that happen throughout the week, the cracked stories, of, uh, as I like to refer to them as, for Halo Infinite. And this, guys, we have a Twitter hot take that went a little bit on the wrong side for the Twitter user. One of the biggest bands in the world just played the Halo theme song in one of their concerts. We have the Halo 3 AA gun mod, which is really cool, and also get a chance to see some Halo 3 weapons within Halo 4, so kind of interesting stuff. So let's talk about that Halo hot take on Twitter that kind of went a bit sideways for the user themselves. I'm gonna hide their name just so they don't get any kind of spam going their way or any negativity, but this is kind of one of the things you have to take in consideration when it comes to feedback of Halo Infinite, guys. Where he tweets out saying 3 3 is going back to classic radar for Halo is such a bad move for my fun and the fun of countless newcomer players. The only people who want the old one, which completely negates interesting surprises and stealth, 
are such a vocal yet small group of conservative purists. And I just feel like there's such high hyperbole right there where it's like, I don't really think you understand kind of like everyone else's opinion outside of your own. But this kind of goes with just the community as a whole where a lot of people feel like their version of Halo is the best version and it should be the one that everyone has to play. And it's important to kind of keep into consideration that it's like not just your fun is the fun that needs to be taken in consideration. There's other people out there who have different priorities with Halo. It's one of the best and worst things about developing for this game. And it's why I don't envy 343 at all when it comes to making a Halo Infinite. But this had like 600 plus likes, 44 retweets with quotes, and 30 plus regular retweets. And some community members talked about this as well. We're saying like, yeah, like maybe for you, that's not how you like it, but you just make it, you can't make these big, wide sweeping judgments because that's how you feel. And that's basically saying, oh, because I feel this, other people are feeling it as well. I just have no proof proof to say that as well. It's just one of those annoying things you have to deal with as a community member. But you want to hear some happy news? Some interesting news coming from 21 Pilots ended up playing the Halo 2 rock theme at their concert and I was like really? And I had to open this up and check it out by myself. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Obviously, I'm not a huge fan of 21 Pilots, and I don't expect many of you guys out there, but some of you guys out there might be as well. And just pretty interesting to see, like, wait, really? They played the Halo 2 theme? And like, yeah, I went to another website, confirmed it, like, they played the Halo 2 theme at their concert, which is just so cool to see one of the biggest bands out there playing some Halo, which is just fantastic. Next, we have the user Control-Alt-Destroy. He posts in some Halo 3 weapons into Halo 4, which I thought was just kind of an interesting take on these weapons, obviously, and it's just kind of cool to see how these classic weapons are rendered within the different kind of lighting systems that Halo 4 utilizes, and they look pretty freaking good, and they blend in very well. A little bit more metallic than I remember seeing in Halo 3, though still very cool to see just your favorite weapons just put into another game and just seen in a different light, obviously. Just Pretty interesting stuff. And the last bit of cracked Halo greatness, guys, I think you all really need to take a look and see, guys, is Rejected Shotgun modded the uh, plasma pistol to be an AA gun instead of the uh, Scarab gun. Basically, just said Scarab gun, move on over, because then we have the AA gun from the plasma pistol. And this just looks so cool. The visual effects of the explosions within Halo 3 are just absolutely incredible. And just seeing like a mod like this being created is just so much fun. If I get my hands on it, guys, you guarantee I'm gonna try to post something with this because this is just crazy awesome. So yeah, that about does it for your weekly dose of crack for Halo stories. <laughs> if that's even the proper name to call it, I don't know, guys. But thank you so much for checking out the channel, guys. If you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo, make sure you subscribe to the channel for our daily videos that we do upload, which go way more in depth than we do in these kind of videos, which kind of just more like give you the headlines of everything that happened in the past week. So check out this Halo playlist, guys, if you missed any content from me recently. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.